Welcome, everybody, to episode 116 of The China Show, formerly known as ADV Podcasts. We have a fairly dour, in fact, a very dour topic to talk about today. Of course, there are some interesting and more fun things involved as well. But of course, the main topic isn't a a happy one. But we're glad you're here with us to join us for this conversation, because you got to see what's going on in China with regards to this terrible news. Anyway, shall we saunter right into it? Sure. All right. So going to start out with what's new. And this is where we talk about what's new, specifically with regards to China. And there is quite a lot. We thought we'd give you just a little bit of a follow up as to something we spoke about recently. Remember when um, Xi Jinping went over to celebrate the handover of Hong Kong to mainland China? Remember that? I do. You know that um, they must be celebrating getting away with theft and lies. Why? Because they didn't live up to the agreement. Correct. When Hong Kong was handed over, there was an agreement. We're going to hand it over if it remains unmolested. A one country, two systems. In other words, Hong Kong still keeps its autonomy, keeps its laws, keeps its freedom of speech, keeps all of that kind of stuff. That was the condition. China definitely touched Hong Kong in the no-no place. Yeah, they completely broke all of the conditions of the contract. I think that contract should be torn up. Well, yeah. It should be like rescinded. Yeah. Especially since, and hear me out here for a second. And if you really want to get pedantic about this, the contract was signed to a previous government, not the Communist Party of China. You can do this with anything. Yeah. yeah. I'm just saying, like, that contract was signed with a long dead, non existent government and a d- different with system. China, technically. Yeah. Had to do with the Remember ruling the new China. At the, time. the whole thing, here's the deal. Yeah. Just to make it simple Hong Kong was handed back to China by mm. the UK government, right? It was yes. a contract. And they signed that with the government prior to this, the Communist Party of China. Yeah, the 100-year lease. Right. Now, you might think that's pedantic, mm. but actually I don't think it is because if you think about it, the whole rebrand of what China did was they called themselves Xinjiangguo, which yes. means the new China. Mm-hmm. And the whole point of that is that China was reborn, reinvented with Chairman Mao. The yeah. old China was dead. In his words, the old China is dead, mm. right? China, they're trying to make a resurgence now and like claim some of their past because yeah. they realize what an error that was. But they killed old China. They killed the language. They killed the. They tried to kill the script, for God's sake. Yeah, they, they tried to kill killed the history. It. They killed the history. They killed all of the remnants, mm-hmm. the temples, everything, yeah. the religion, the freedoms, everything yeah. was destroyed. And then new China was born with the Communist Party of China. So you can't just get to pick and choose what was your identity before. You I can't mean, say, think, oh, yeah. we do claim the Qin, Qing dynasty. Well, you didn't exist. What are you talking about? Yeah. You know? I think about it this way. You know Cuba, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know Cuba. So, you know Castro. I do. Imagine he signed an agreement with Angola, for instance. Sure. And the agreement is, I'm going to send, uh, you know, I'm going to send you AK-47s. And he did do that. Yeah, well, I'm just, yeah, <laughs> just exactly. No imagination. But imagine he says, I'm going to send you uh, 100,000 AK-47s sure. a year uh-huh. uh, for the next 100 years. Uh-huh. But then... Let's say uh, Argentina comes along and they completely take over uh, Cuba, okay. right? So Argentina comes in there and they bomb the crap out of it. They sure. take it over. Now it belongs to Argentina. Do you think that agreement of sending the AK-47s is going to be honored? Absolutely not. It's no. a different government. Yeah, they're going to have a new government. They're yeah. going to have new people in charge. Yeah, and they'll have the, the alliances, whatever Argentina uh, had for alliances, would carry over considering that would be their new land. Yes. Right? You wouldn't have alliances with potentially enemy nations because the previous country's government did. Yeah, so I'm just saying yes. the UK did the right thing. They honored their agreement yeah. that they'd made 100 years ago when, I mean, no one's still alive who was around. No. No. But they honored their agreement, but mainland China did not. Yeah. And it wasn't even their agreement to begin with. No, that's what I'm no, trying to say. It was not. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, anyway. So any, yeah, let me, let me get yeah. this. So this is a throwback for you guys. Now, so Xi Jinping went to Hong Kong mm-hmm. and there was a massive, massive mistake. They cut to a wide shot to yeah. show that, in fact, he is not talking to hundreds of thousands of people. He was talking to four. And it was a massive loss of face. Whoever did that is probably in really big trouble. Yeah. Because yeah. the whole, the theatrics of this is that Xi Jinping's supposed to be talking to all these people. He's confident. He's not hiding behind security. 
Right. Here's the deal. Why go to Hong Kong in the first right. place? Right. Like, why are you there? The only reason to go there is to show that you're the leader and yep. you're going to go and celebrate with the people and, and show that you're there yes. with the people of Hong Except Kong. Except the majority of Hong Kong people don't want anything to do with Xi Jinping of course. or China. Yeah, but the, That's the, like the illusion. The wound. But the illusion, like, why go there in the first place? Yeah, yeah. It's to, it's, they, they destroyed the democracy movement. Mm. They made it a police state, which yes. is literally bordering on as oppressive as mainly in China now. Yeah. Right. It's mm -hmm. literally getting to that point. Yeah. It's dropped in all the rankings of mm -hmm. the world for everything, every index of fin freedom. The financial hub yeah. of uh, that part of the world is kind of crumbling. Yeah. Mm. So you can imagine this is salt in the wound, but yeah. So whoever did this, let's play the hilarious. clip. Yeah. Let's play the clip. <laughs> that, that was the shot. Yeah, so... <laughs> he was they, in a train station, by the way. Yeah. He's an NTR. Train station, completely evacuated. He's talking to four people who are standing off to the side. But you wouldn't have known that if you saw the, you know, the, this shot, the close-up shot. He's only looking at a camera. The people that are there are off to his side. He's not even looking at them. No. You know, he's just ignoring them. So it's just theater. It's the usual mainland China thing. It's smoke and mirrors and bullshit. But it sometimes right. gets exposed. It does. And I just wanted to show some poll polarity here. Yes. Um, Jiang Zemin, the yes. leader before the prior leader. So mm. basically it went Mao, Deng Xiaoping, Jiang Zemin, Hu Jintao, Xi Jinping. Yeah. Five main main dudes, right? So two leaders ago, Jiang it's kind of like the George Bush of America. Two, yeah, exactly. Two yeah. two presidents ago. Yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the nine eleven uh, George Bush. No, it would be like Obama. Oh, Obama. Yeah, yeah that's right. We, yeah, that's right. I keep Imagine forgetting. the Obama, not in in not in policy, but in uh, in order. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> the Obama of China. So imagine Jiang Zemin looks like a, kind of like a dead frog. Corpse. <laughs> yeah, Jiang Zemin is what we call, <laughs> which means zombie. Yeah, they always keep wheeling him out at these conferences, <laughs> yeah. and the guy is literally just you know a, yeah. a second away from death. But anyway, he's the he's the uh, you know the party party leader and stuff. Anyway, <laughs> he this is his visit to Hong Kong. In yeah. 1998, yeah. Uh, for the same celebration, by the way. Yeah. So just want some little, a little bit of polarity here. Xi Jinping sitting in an underground MTR, heavily guarded. They literally put up blockades everywhere, armed guards, snipers, everything. Mm -hmm. And this was Jiang Zemin. Yeah, let's take a look what he, what his uh, little visit was like. Literally standing in the road. Yeah, that's it. I've been to that mall. Yeah. yeah. He's like super pumped i'm not saying by the way i'm not endorsing jiang zemin at all no he was awful in many different ways but uh, just look at the difference of kind of the vibe because honestly even in hong kong at that time yeah it was much they were much more receptive I mean, there was a lot of fear obviously yeah. right yeah but there was much more positive reception to china at that time because yeah. of their trajectory it was going in sure than there was now I mean, yeah. Um, so there's a lot less, a lot more, there was a lot more love, or, or I'm going to say tolerance for China at that time than there is now, which yeah. is crazy to think yeah. about. I mean, if you look at him, he's literally shoulder to shoulder with the average man in the street yeah. there in Hong Kong. Yep. He's in crowded shopping oh, malls, he's a lot, restaurants. He's a lot more charismatic than yeah. Xi Jinping, that's for sure. Yeah. And there's, there's, <laughs> who put that stupid dancing thing in there? But I mean, you I know, know, there, there's Xi Jinping, that's his equivalent. Yeah. It's just... Oops. Yeah. <laughs> That's really bad PR. That was not supposed to be shown. No. And the thing about Xi Jinping, the thing about Jiang Zemin is he spoke English very well. Um, famous, famous quote really, is yeah. sometimes uh, too young, sometimes naive. Yes. Um, he spoke very, very good English. Mm -hmm. You know, he did full on interviews at first in, with CNN or 60 Minutes in English, mm. right? Um, and people just knew who he was, whereas Xi Jinping is lethargic. He's not charismatic. Everything is prepped for him ahead of time. Sure. You know, so this was really bad PR at the time. Yeah. So we thought, we thought we'd give you a little follow up on that yeah. just to put some perspective in there. Yeah. Anyway, now we're moving on to this picture, which has been going on, uh, doing the rounds. Maybe you can explain what's happening here. So this is uh, a PLA soldier, People's Liberation Army. That's mm -hmm. the Communist Party of China's army. Um, he is teaching uh, these poor, oh, these poor Uyghurs mm. uh, the Chinese language because they're, they need so much help and guidance, right? Yeah. This is going around to combat the idea that there are forced labor camps slash concentration camps in or, Xinjiang. Yeah, cultural genocide, yes. which of course there is because, you know, um, you have to learn. And it says they're like Zhonghua Minzu, which is, you know, like the 
Chinese race, basically, it's being written down there. Yeah, so I'll say, yeah, it says Zhonghua Minzu, and it's prob- probably they're going to finish Looks like it's Jia or something. Yi Jiaren, yeah. So yeah, like, Jiaren, yeah. So the Chinese race is one family. That's yeah. what they're teaching the Uyghur girl to write. Yes. Yeah. So you have to understand how it works in China. It's always woman, Zhonghua Ren, and it's an ethno state. It's all about like we're Chinese and we're all the same, and we all have to study the same, write the same language, study the same stuff. We have to. All right. It doesn't matter that you're an ethnic minority who has your own uh, language and your own written language and your own religion and all that. No, that doesn't help. We have to get rid of that. We have to get rid of your language. We have to get rid of your culture. We have to get rid of your religion. And you must be, just like every other Chinese person, um, a Mandarin speaker. You must write simplified Chinese and you must identify as... Mm -hmm. Uh, majority Chinese person. Yeah, and the, the government portrays this image like the Uyghurs are so poor and undereducated. We need to be the savior. It's yeah. a savior complex. And it's also an excuse for these camps. Yes, yes. They've always said, oh, they're just vocational training camps that you'll get shot if you try to escape. Yeah. You know, and we've seen from the Xinjiang police files all the terrible things and, uh, of course, all the dissidents that have escaped and told of all the terrible things. We don't need to go into that. But the fact of the matter is one of their biggest justifications for these camps is the fact that they're teaching the poor little Uyghurs yeah. life skills yeah. and language. That's what and... this this image is going around for that purpose. Yes, that's why it's going So around. the reason I brought this up was that this actually faced quite a bit of flack on Chinese netizen media. Yeah. Um, not to talk about like, oh, uh, the genocide is bad. More of like, why did you have to portray a PLA soldier helping the pretty young girl and then all the little boys are on the side just standing there looking at it it looked they were like calling him a perv and all this kind of stuff so it, it, is, actually, it is a little suspect it's, it's a little sus. yeah so, so that was actually interesting to see a little pushback especially with all the um accusations of yeah that that was that's you know of what's going on there with yeah. the forced they force uh the women even if they're married to live with a hun chinese yeah you know person that that was actually in there and people in chinese were talking about that yeah because that there's allegations of that going i mean it's happening no of course there's allegations even in amongst chinese people yeah being like that's a little weird yeah it is a little weird it's a little weird anyway anyway so that's um another piece of uh new propaganda that's been causing a bit of wave well a few waves around the chinese internet now this is something that you may have heard of let's let's get us out of here and we'll just show this you can talk over the footage Um, i do yeah so hold on just pause it Okay. I want to say, uh, I don't know where this clip is from. Someone sent me this clip. Um, and I don't, if it's from a different thing, I, I don't know what it's from. But I will say that I've confirmed the information. Oh, it's true. Yeah, it's true. So it says Chinese state companies are buying up U.S. farmlands. Mm-hmm. Farmland. Yeah. That's a strategic process behind the global land grab by the Chinese Communist Party. What for? Food crisis, unrestricted warfare. A new 300-acre land piece of land purchased near a U.S. Air Force base may give us the indications. Mm. So what happened was there was a uh, a military uh, facility, yeah, and a huge swath, well, 300 acres of land was just purchased next to it, mm-hmm. which is also very sus, yeah, uh, by China. Yeah, I don't know what legal process is allowing the Chinese government to use conduit companies to buy massive swaths of land in the U.S. We talked about this before, didn't they? Buy a huge part of Texas, yes, like a yeah. massive part of uh-huh. Texas. Yeah, it is. It is absurd because the problem with this whole situation is, I know, for instance, the U.S. government can't go and buy a big piece of land in China. It's Absolutely not. Possible. not. No. Okay. I understand that in America, it's all about capitalism and you know there's a free market and all that that, kind of stuff but there should be certain limits like uh, a foreign government that's an enemy government and let's not let's just not hash things around here it's It's an enemy government the way that the chinese government speaks about the u.s yeah it's made it the way that they do their espionage Uh and steal from the u.s and the way that they constantly it's an enemy government it's just so it is. I, I just don't know how else else to put it. It's an enemy who's sitting there with a smile on their face and still dealing with you, but it's definitely an enemy. Because if you've lived in China, if you are a Chinese person, you know yourself the rhetoric that goes around every day. You see it on billboards, you see it in the news, you see it in the newspaper. It's always going on about how bad America is and, you know, that they're 
your competition. And yeah. it has been that since the Cold War, since before that's then right. even. That's right. So, you know, it's an enemy government that spies on the US. Yeah. And we know they spy. Oh, yeah. They do this transnational repression yeah. crap. They've just, by the way, just indicted those five people. Did five they? five people. Oh, nice. Like yesterday. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know about that. You know, the, the ones that destroyed the statue and, and right. tried to get the tax information about dissidents and yeah. tried to harass them and defame them and Sounds stuff. Sounds familiar, by the way. Yeah, it happens to us, and that's something we're going to look into actually making a thing out of soon. But the yeah. fact of the matter is... we know that there's an avenue. Yeah. The fact of the matter is you've got a government that is doing this espionage and all this other kind of crap here on U.S. soil, mm -hmm. but they're being allowed to buy up massive swaths of land near sensitive military bases. I feel like that shouldn't be allowed. No. You know? Absolutely not. Yeah. Hopefully this something will be done about that. We just wanted to bring that to people's attention. So if you hear about in your area, mm -hmm. um, no, I'm serious. Like if you hear about like the Chinese government or Chinese companies buying up land in your area, that's what you need to reach out to your representatives and congressmen about. Yeah, there's certain there's there should be a limit to this free market. Yeah, you know, honestly, well, I'm not. There shouldn't be a limit to the free market. There should be a limit on who can exploit the free market That's my unfreely. Meaning. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, when I was uh, stuck on the side of the road and you were doing that uh, that interview with Dan David, remember that? Yes. We spoke a little bit about their, about how the, the Chinese companies that list in the American stock market are also taking advantage of this yeah. whole situation. That's it's right. a similar kind of a thing. Finding loopholes to exploit uh, the American market. Yeah. And this is something that needs to be looked into. Yeah. So just keep it in mind, this is happening. The Chinese Communist Party is buying up huge tracts of land in America. So, yeah, maybe don't sell it to him. Yeah, agreed. <laughs> you know, yeah. find another buyer. Yeah. That's all. Yeah. Anyway, um, this was kind of funny. You found this clip over here. <laughs> Tankies <laughs> arguing over whether China or Russia is a better place to live. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I just love these clowns. It's, yeah, it's pretty hilarious. Um, for those of you who don't know who Tankies are, they're people that admire authoritarian governments. They yeah. love communism. They hate the West, that type of thing. Kind of stuff. So, they're, you know, anyway, that aside, this clip comes from a very recent uh, post uh, of an airplane ride. China Air Airlines, where are they going from? Uh, ha, Beijing to Hungyang. Beijing to Hungyang. Hungyang. Hungyang is in Hunan. We've been there a yeah. few times. Yeah, we have. Um, so it looks kind of normal, right? You're just uh, riding around in the plane, look out the window, mm, taking a little look. And what do you see? Well, okay, first of all, I want to point out that the if you look at the very top, one of those rivets is missing. Yeah, it's a okay? hole. And if you look at the two rivets... Beneath it, they are moving around, um, especially the ones really jumping around a lot. Mm -hmm. Both of them are, okay? And this is, um, this is uh, what you would call it, uh, <laughs> uh, a very bad situation simply because, well, it could come off. I don't know. What would you think if you were at 35,000 feet and you saw that out your window? Probably not very good things. I mean, airline safety is is all over the world it's treated very seriously mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. pre-flight checks are super important mm -hmm. this is off by the way just oh. in case you're curious oh, cool. um you're trying to find the time yeah i was oh, okay. i can just look at my laptop yeah okay, there we go. <laughs> yeah so anyway pre-flight um uh make sure we're not spending too much time what's new yeah gotcha mm -hmm. yeah pre-flight checks are all about uh making sure the aircraft is safe they get inspections all the time. It's very important. And something as blatantly bad as that should have been spotted. Yeah. And it makes you worry. Yeah. And it brings the idea of Chabdor into the spotlight. It's ultimate Chabdor. So what is, what is Chabdor? It means good yeah. enough. And, you know, here's the thing. In China, there's this thing that we've noticed ourselves many times. When people have to inspect the escalators and elevators. Yep. Because the rules are there. Okay, just like every country, the rules are there. It's correct. They say that, you know, they say a date when it was inspected, you get a stamp. When you travel in an elevator in China, you'll always see up at the top there, it says it was inspected on this day with an official stamp. Yeah. And it must be inspected on whichever next That's day. Right. But we've been in elevators where they are just trash mm -hmm. and would never have passed an inspection. Nope. Okay, but they still have their inspection stamp. 
Yeah, like in my building. Yes, where it actually fell down. Collapse, and there was a family inside. Yes. It was right in the beginning of when it, it was built. Yeah. And it was supposed to have been inspected. No inspectors came, and they had the stamp. Turns out, uh, it's actually a metal plate in the elevator. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of the most common people to bribe are the people that in, you know inspect the elevators because it's a lot of work to have yeah. to go and do that. So they're like, eh, I'll just pay you off to do it. Yeah, they can and... cheaply throw up a crap elevator mm. at low cost, and then yeah, you, we've seen people get cut in half. Yeah, look, terrible things have happened. Mm. The fact of the matter is, for the most part, modern equipment you can kind of rely on the fact that it's probably not going to fail. Yeah. So they take the risk by just yeah. not inspecting it. But there's, and, think about it. If they're cutting that corner, think about the corners cut in the factory mm-hmm. and the, the people that make the cables, all that stuff. Yeah, and the fire yep. um, inspections and stuff. These are also. imported. I Yeah, of course. <laughs> no, look, there's, there's a lot of that. And there was actually an epidemic, believe it or not. I made a video about yeah. it years ago. An epidemic of people actually being killed by escalators. Yeah, getting eaten by them. Yeah, you know, escalators in the mall, you go yeah. up there. It was a huge epidemic yeah, when we were there. Yeah, it's like ridiculous. Like, people were dying a lot. Yeah. Because it turns out that the inspectors were being bribed. Yeah, just like the elevators. Yeah. Um, and so, why would that not extend to the airline industry? Why not? Yeah. Of course it does. People like to make exceptions all the time. Yeah. This goes all the way down to building materials. That's yeah. why you see buildings falling down. We make videos, why are buildings falling down in China? Because it happens all the time. This yeah. isn't a rare instance. People think it's some like, oh, there was that, like, you know, that Florida apartment building. That's happening all the time in China. Sure. It's it, it's an epidemic. Yeah. There's bad yeah. construction all over the place. It's awful. Yeah. It's awful. Right. And then a lot of it gets... Um, you swept know, under the swept rug. Swept under the rug or just completely banned off the internet. Yeah. So you can't see it. So just saying... If you're traveling um, in China by by air, you're taking a bit of a risk. Oh yeah, oh anything, anything yeah. you're doing. Yeah, walking, you can fall into a sinkhole or get hit with building tiles. Yeah, happens all the time. Anyway, just wanted to point that out. Yeah. So uh, that's pretty much everything we have in what's new. So let's hit a couple of super chats before we hit our main main subject, of course, which is soft power hour. That's right. Mm-hmm. Uh, Light seeker says the callousness of contemporary PRC culture has no peers. The asymmetry between how the Chinese Chinese uh, PRC people expect to be treated versus how they treat others is insane. Yes. He also says, Abe San actually had a vision for how to lead the country. He was pro-Taiwan, understood the threat of China and the importance of U.S.-Japan ties. Unfortunately, he was ahead of that time, uh, ahead of mm-hmm. the time. May his memory mm-hmm. be a blessing. Yeah. Dylan says, rip to Shinzo Abe, more integrity in uh, than Schietler in his left toe. Than his cronies combined. When she dies, there'll probably be celebrations abroad, whether we support them or not. And sh- China would would go ballistic. Um, sure. Yeah, and we'll we'll continue. Okay, so let's hit soft power, guys. This is where we talk about our main topic of the show, and this is where we talk about how China tries to change your mind, um, you know, through media and various mm-hmm. other ways. And this fits in quite well with that. This particular particular narrative, you see. Yeah. China tries to pretend on the world stage, the diplomats and, uh, you know, the, the outfacing news that China is, um, you know, a, a mature country who can deal with con- other countries in a mature way and diplomatic way. But unfortunately, that's not true. In fact, it's an incredibly immature government. And the way that they deal with the outside world is by villainizing the outside world. Right. The way that they deal with the outside world is by ridiculing the outside world. And they encourage this amount of, uh, you know, ridiculement in the populace. Mm. Okay. They teach uh, the people of China to hate Japan. Mm -hmm. Okay. And look, they have um, legitimate gripes when it comes to the treatment that they uh, suffered at the hands of the Japanese during World War II the Nanjing Massacre, and various other things that happened that were terrible atrocities. The entire world at that time, the Allies, have a lot of gripes against Japan. Japan was a nasty, nasty um, you know, character during World yeah, War II. Uh, one of the worst. Uh, yeah, if not the yeah, worst. If not you know? the worst. The kind of atrocities that they did. Um, and, Particularly and bad things. to China. Yeah, absolutely. But as we all know, that was in the past. Things have changed. You know, Japan has reformed yeah. dramatically. Uh, things are very different now. But in China, they do not want people to forgive 
or forget. It's very, it's all for convenience. So yeah. they'll take, uh, for example, the school children in the city I lived in, they would take them to the anti-Japan war crimes museum, which these are legitimate, horrible things. It's like a Holocaust gas, museum. Yeah. Gas chamber stuff, uh, bacterial experimentation, yeah. killing unit, unit babies. Unit seven, whatever it was. Horrible, was one, yeah. horrible stuff. But yeah. they, they'll take five-year-olds to go see mm -hmm. corpses and horrible, horrible atrocities and then teach hatred from a very young age and then wonder why later it gets out of control. Yeah. You know? And the reason they do this is it's a, it's a common, common tactic for authoritarian governments is that they need a... It's almost like a scapegoat to fall back on when things go bad domestically. Yes. So what, you know, we've talked about this a million times, but the only protests that are allowed in China are protests against Japan or yeah. against other 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 countries. countries, yeah, like Korea or something. And you can't just go have one. No. I can't just go, if let's say I was a Chinese person, I can't just go have an anti-Japan protest. You have to register it and then get approval, right? Yeah. Now, once you do that, then you can have a very organized protest. But these things get out of hand. They burn down sushi shops. They kill, you know, or they, they set, like, Japanese businesses on fire. Um, they flip Japanese cars over. Yeah, I remember most of the time, in fact, all of the time, those so-called Japanese businesses are Chinese. Oh, yeah, in the in the, the cars and all this kind of stuff. It's Chinese they're owned. They're half, 51% Chinese owned. Yeah, and the people that own them are Chinese too. And the, the owners are Chinese, so yeah. you're just hurting yourself. But anyway, yeah. that's neither here nor there. We've yeah. seen these blow up and they're scary. They're very scary yeah. events, but they're always government sanctioned because what it does is it's always around a very convenient time. Maybe there's a scandal with a politician. Maybe yeah. there's a, a huge thing comes out about the downturn in the economy, downturn in the economy. Maybe there's a big medical scandal, stock market, maybe crash. the stock market crashes. When you mm -hmm. allow people to blow off steam, you can, you can redirect anger away from the party and then towards another country, a foreign entity, America, yes. Canada, Japan. They always do this, right? Japan's the number one scapegoat. Japan's usually a number one scapegoat. Mm. And so there's a lot of deep-seated hatred for that. If you turn on the TV, there's anti-Japan war dramas all day on every, every day. channel. Every day. You know, pretty yeah. much every channel. I mean, every main major channel. Sure. Uh, news broadcasts. The, the, the slang in Chinese language. Uh, you know, Xiao Ruben, this the the belittling thing they call it, Little Japan or Xiao Ruben Yeah, Little, little, Japanese, little ghosts. Japanese ghosts, Little Japanese devils, right? Yes, yeah. This is very uh, okay to say. This is not like two guys hanging out at the bar saying, no, it's just saying racial little slurs. Little children in kindergarten are saying it's it. Teachers, the, uh, leaders. The school plays in kindergarten school are plays. about killing Japanese people. It's a deep. Deep, you can deep, go to these the theme thing. parks where you can bayonet. Yes, Japanese. Uh, like Japanese soldiers, soldiers. Straw, straw men. They like have right. like a that's like a an straw man argument. Yeah, an effigy yeah. of a Japanese soldier yeah. that's made out of straw in a, in a uniform, and little children, like five year olds, are bayoneting yeah. these things. I actually it's went like, to one where there was American soldiers. Yeah, you yeah. get that too. It's it's ridiculous. It's teaching people discrimination and hatred on an industrial scale, and everybody gets taught this. There's no exceptions. Sure. Everybody gets taught to hate the Japanese in China. So everyone. So bring this back. Yeah. Right? You wonder by oh, the state. Yes. It's state sanctioned hatred. Right? Yeah. And it is and it's scary mm -hmm. and it's really messed up, but it's for a reason. Because yes. like I said, the party is ultimately the most scared of people, you know, standing up to rebel against them. Mm. If you can misdirect or if you can redirect that and you can take some of the heat off the central government, then they're not too worried anymore. They can have a, a bay, they can, you know, yeah. an effigy basically to, yeah, bay, to for bayonet. the people to bayonet yeah. and kind of relieve some of their steam. So what happened here, you won't be surprised when ex-prime minister, no matter what opinions you have about him, by the way, it yeah. doesn't really matter. This no. is more about, um, you know, the public opinion, public sentiment, what happened. We were not surprised to see just the absolute atrocious things that people did and said. And unfortunately, you know, I, I want to say this is that, you, you know, you can look at this two ways. Yes, China is a huge country with 1.4 billion people. Mm -hmm. And yes, there are a ton of reasonable people that didn't say things like this. Yes. However, the, the, the issue I have with this is that a huge, huge chunk of people did say awful things and, and you know, showed themselves to be very callous about this and mm -hmm. say awful, awful, horrible things. Yes. And the second way I look at this is it's not even necessarily their fault. Because if you've been indoctrinated from like a three-year-old to mm. hate this other being that's actually a demon sick entity that's your enemy and you want to kill your whole life, yeah. of course you're going to say bad stuff about this. Sure. It's in, it's not, like I said, I think the analogy is good. It's not two dudes sitting there saying racial slurs at a bar in Alabama. It's no. not like, yeah, you know, like saying sure. horrible things about 
you know, people of a different color. This is ingrained so deeply that it's no one thinks it's bad at all to say any of this no. stuff. And the, the reason I wanted to bring this up, and I, I think this is very necessary to preface this, not to cover anyone's asses, but to say you have to understand going into this why people would act like this. Mm. And number two, you have to understand that the Chinese government is trying to play off their citizens' actions like it's a couple bad people yeah. when they've they've created this monster. They've created they've it. Done and, it. And they're trying to look like the good guy. It is not a minority. It's the no, majority. It's the majority. So they might say, oh, a couple of bad eggs. And they might be now going out trying to censor sure. some of this stuff. But I'm telling you, it's the majority. If you live in China, if the subject of Japan or Japanese people ever comes up, the majority of the people, in fact, 99% of people will have bad things to say about Japan and Japanese people. Sure. Very do few people don't. I What's gotta that? go back for something. Yeah, everyone's mad because I'm doing the Alabama thing again. Yeah. Okay. I've so actually been guys, to Alabama. Two guys. So have I. Oh, you have? Of course. I've been to yeah. every state. Okay. You know that. So why do you single it out? Then? I don't know. It's just like a stereotype. So mm. imagine two guys are sitting in Louisiana, right? Why is it gonna be the South? Or How about Arkansas? Nebraska? Or Nebraska? Nebraska? Mm. Or California? Two guys are sitting in California. They'll get canceled, though. No, they will. That's yeah. why I'm just Some, using easy Someone to... will come and stand up to them and say, like, I'll... I'm calling the cops on you. Yeah, I'll put it to you this way. Picture wherever you would think people are making racial stereotypes, yeah. you're in that bar. It yeah. doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't have to be all about Yeah, you, okay. you could be in, like, I don't know, Brakpan in South Africa or something. You could be in Bulgaria. Remember you. You gotta understand, China. <laughs> Got yes. understand. Anyway, China. let's get into yeah. what actually happened here. Absolutely. Okay, so um, as we all know, Shinzo Abe is the former prime minister of Japan. Love him or hate him. He has been around for a long time. I think he may have been the longest serving prime minister. He was, yeah. Uh, he did a lot to try and bolster Taiwan and Japanese uh, defenses, you know, in the region and stuff. He did a lot of uh, sort of pro-NATO stuff and things like that. Yeah. There's tons of people love him. Those Tons people of people like hate him, him. Yeah. just like Obama or Biden or anyone else. Or anyone else. Either way, he's a politician, okay? Um, unfortunately, during a campaign speech yesterday, he was gunned down by a psychopath with a homemade Home shotgun. shotgun. Yeah. Yeah. I was shocked to hear this, um, and we're not here to discuss like how it went down. No. But I was shocked to hear it because of Japan's crazy, crazy gun laws. And I want to give some people some facts about sure. Japan's gun laws. So. You can't have guns in Japan, obviously. Yeah. Can't. C-A-N-T. It's not the U.S. Um, there are rare cases for There hunting. are rare cases. So you can have a gun if you are a skeet shooter or a target shooter. Mm -hmm. You have to pass background checks. Then you have to keep your gun at the police station, and they, like, rent it out. Basically, you have to sign it out. And it has to be, like, disassembled, and you can carry, carry it only to the shooting facility apparently mm -hmm. do that and then you have to return it it's also something about the bullets there's also something every single bullet is like registered to that yeah. person anyway long story short that's why you you know when i was i was shocked to hear and then i found out it was a homemade gun it made a lot more sense sure right uh, but this is not here to talk about what, what went down the most important thing that happened here was that uh an ex-leader was lost a democratically yeah. elected leader yeah and something we have personal experience with is the polar opposite i think china's doing a great job of trying to it, it makes some equivalencies or something with different countries but china's not a democracy it's no. a full one-party dictatorship when you go to japan like like we saw when we were there the democracy is taken very seriously you got these japan. weird like politicians standing on buses yeah. making speeches and I stuff it's kind of bizarre white guy i know it's so Japanese. strange it's yeah crazy yeah right yeah. And you can run for politics in Japan, and you. And the thing is, people take it very seriously and get down to earth with their with their people, yeah. right? I remember there's a lot of campaigning going on in uh, this small town. I was outside of Mount Fuji in this small mm -hmm. town, in uh, Hakone, I believe, mm -hmm. and there was a lot of campaigning going on. People were giving me stuff and waving. Everyone's friendly, but, but the politicians were right there. It wasn't a representative. The mm -hmm. politician was there on the ground doing yeah. it, right? Yeah. So the campaigning is it's very it's not like China. Yeah. It's a full on. It's a actually, if you look at the Freedom Index, it's it's slightly freer than. So it's the not US. like Xi Jinping standing in a railway station with like exactly no one nearby. Correct, and I don't want people to get like think that they're like two different sides of the coin or something. These are worlds apart. Sure. These are worlds apart here. So mm -hmm. Shinzo Abe was not even serving at the time. I mean, he's an ex prime minister. Yeah, but he's doing a campaign speech because he obviously wants to re-elect. First party. Yeah, first, first party. party right? 
He he stepped down himself yeah. for health reasons. Yeah. He doesn't want to get reelected, but he's speaking on behalf of his party. So he's got some pretty bad health reasons now. Absolutely, the worst. The worst. He's dead. Yeah. So um, it's unfortunate. It's it's tragic, and I think we really need to cut to the chase here. Yeah. So let me. I'm yeah. getting to it. Right. So China. What we noticed was right on our radar. Very mm. quickly, China puts out this tweet. So pulls oh out, yeah, says, in the Global Times. You read it, you read it, yeah. They put out, the gunman has been identified as a former member of Japan's self-defense force who obtained the firearm through the advantage of his job, Japanese media citing Nara police. Now, first of all, we know it's a homemade gun, so he did not obtain a firearm through his job. This is just bullshit. They, they jumped, jumped, on, jumped on it. They put this tweet out. Im- Chinese state media. Chinese state media. Immediately, some speculative bullshit, and they took the tweet down. Obviously, it's fake. They were probably told to reel it in because... In the beginning, I think the Global Times always is very insensitive and very brash, and uh, they really yeah. just go out there and they talk absolute crap. They don't care how tragic it is. They don't care. They just say some snarky comment. Yes. Okay? The fact of the matter is they got reeled back in because I think the Chinese government realized that this is not the right um, way to approach this because, you know, there's a lot of tensions in the area. Yeah. And if you want to really go and piss everybody off right now, it's a bad idea, but it yeah. was kind of too late right. because not only state media, but the any post about the the reported shooting right in the beginning when they're saying like <clears throat> breaking news, um, it's reported that uh, you know Shinja Abe has been shot. Immediately, the comments that are upvoted with hundreds of thousands of votes are saying things like you know pop the champagne, let's celebrate, you know that kind of thing. Yeah. So they had to reel this back and delete a bunch of stuff and you know mute a bunch of things. And then they kind of put a, a China extends sympathy, hopes Abe is out of danger soon tweet. Uh, I mean, uh, a Global Times article, right? They said that, but that's not what the Chinese internet was saying. Okay, the Chinese internet was saying tons of terrible things. Yeah, which we'll get into. Um, I just wanted to show the absolute insanity that Global Times, so the Chinese state media, yeah. just ran with this. Like, ins- insane. Look at this. Right. Like, the attack on Abe will certainly provoke the Japanese right wing. Abe's successor and supporters may seize the incident to push his free and open Indo-Pacific and active participation in the Quad and facilitate NATO's entry into East Asia. So, Abe was uh, very The guy's much, not even dead yet, no, or he's yeah. like not even cold, and they're putting this stuff up. Yeah, well, China's very scared about Japan's trajectory. They're going, Japan's going super pro-West. Mm. Right. That's the trajectory. Right. Right. Absolutely not going anywhere closer to China. That's for sure. Yeah. And to have the West in the Pacific like this with a very strong Asian ally like Japan is it's it's China's worst nightmare. Mm -hmm. So this is their chance to kind of like this is what's going to happen. Don't let this happen. Yeah. Don't don't let China be affected. They go again. Right wing forces in Japan may become more active and tout war again amid uh, economic downturn, social divisions, and attack on hashtag Abe may accelerate the revision of uh, pacifist constitution um, and cause ripple effect to foreign policy, like ties with China and US. So what they're worried about now is that, oh, like there's going to be people that'll come out and be like, see, see, our national security is is uh, in danger from, from forces like China, and then there's going to be more anti-China. Yeah. They're so, so paranoid about the, the quad and all these things. They really just kept forces. tweeting out this photo yeah. of the actual shot. Of we, him, we, we censored this, yeah. obviously. They were using that for political clout. They were for their using own that to purposes. say, oh, well, you know, now... For their own agenda. Yeah, yeah exactly, which is kind of crappy. So this is Chinese state media. Anyway, they kept going on about this nonsense. Um... And then, uh, what else? They just kept going. They just kept on the attack going. Uh, could stimulate the Japanese right to promote popular xenophobic and even extreme political goals. Expert. And if you look at the the, the posting of these tweets, it's like almost every it's hour. It's rapid fire. They every just want to capitalize on this and use it for a pro-China yeah. agenda. Yeah, exactly. It's pretty gross. Yeah, it's awful. You know, the way, like, the Chinese media went ape, mm-hmm. ape shit with this. And then they put out, oh, China was shocked by the incident, blah, blah, blah. So what they do is they say, oh, all this bad shit's going to happen. Japan's going to be super anti-China. We're so worried about ourselves, by the way. We're so sorry. We hope Yeah, that Shinzo only Abe. comes later. Yeah. And this is the same publication, by the yeah. way, the Global Times. We're so worried yeah. about Shinzo Abe. We hope he gets better. That's, that's yeah, exactly. the most two-faced bullshit you've seen. You saw it rapid fire. We're watching it come out. And we're like, did you see this? Yeah. Did you see this? Did you see this? Anyway, you can see they deleted their own tweet. That was... Yeah. That was obviously the tweet they put out about the guy getting the gun through his like. Again, Work they were they yeah. were trying to say 
that you know because he worked for the defense you know the yeah. kind of navy or whatever yeah. that's bad and he can get guns to kill right. but obviously that wasn't true no. and they just put just out this, this misinformation nonsense um but yeah now here's the the real uh the the root of of things something we really need to show you is um immediately when you had an official post about this whether it be whichever news organization in china which they're all the same okay people were, were talking about and getting upvoted for saying things like, the people of Shanxi extend, extend our warm congratulations to this. Also, the people of Jiangsu extend our warm congratulations. All the different places, they're basically saying, this is fantastic, and all the people of these different provinces, we extend our congratulations to his death, you know, to the killer, um, which is pretty disgusting. Even worse, while he was still alive at least in the news they were saying that he was in a critical condition people were wishing him death okay in these comments on these official things they were saying right. congratulations to the shooter and we wish that abe dies you know this kind of thing disgusting stuff yeah now again you might think that's fringe you might think it's fringe but no those are the top upvoted comments those are comments that are reaching the top yeah i mean it's and i think i'm glad you pulled this up first because this it's much less important than what we're about to show yeah. When you have businesses catering to it, then you're going to show what public sentiment is. Yes. So here we it's go. Not fringe. Now, you might be curious as to how they have such a quick turnaround time to be able to make banners for their businesses. Yeah. We're going to show you. Yeah. We yeah. actually have footage to show you how. But businesses immediately now, by, bear in mind, these pictures were taken yesterday. Okay. Mm -hmm. While he was still not officially dead yet. Right. Okay. Banners were going up around the businesses. What does this particular one say? It says, in celebration of Abe's death, buy one, get one free. Yeah, it says, uh, so that means like everything in the shop. Yeah. Buy one, get one free. Yeah. Okay. In celebration of his death. Great, eh? Yeah. Um, let's see. This is a, a that's a, above some kind. I don't know if it's a, what kind of shop it is. Okay. Here's like a restaurant. Um, and it also, what does this one say? Oh, this says by in celebration of Shinjo Abe's death, uh, buy one get one free for three for days. Three days for the yeah. next three days. Yeah. Buy one get one free. So in celebration of his, of the murder of yeah. um, Shinjo Abe is the correct way to, to say it. Yeah, and that is um, Naita. Yeah, it so it's milk like tea. milk tea. So yeah. it's like buy one milk tea and get one free for the next three days to celebrate the murder of uh, Shin, Shinjo Abe. Yeah, it's classy. Yeah, stay classy, China. Um, this one. This is like a like a three days weekend carnival. Carnival, yeah, I'd say carnival. Everything off. Forty percent uh, off. Forty percent off, yeah. So everything Leo, for, the, for the the Joel Moore sort of weekend. Yeah. Yeah, for the three day weekend. So you get. everything for the three day weekend is forty percent off. And it says to to celebrate to the celebrate, passing yeah. of Shinjo. So, and they use the word like kind of carnival. Yeah, this is a three day okay. it's like a carnival yeah. celebration. Yeah, lovely. How about the this handwritten note to what today oh, yeah. is a great day basically is what yeah, it's it saying says, there. Today is a happy day. Yeah. Um, former prime Gao, minister. Zheng Gaoxing. Yeah, it's former. Zhe, prime, what, yeah, what, yeah. yeah. Former prime minister uh, Xinjo Abe has been shot dead. Uh, let's celebrate. Everyone's spending over one hundred yuan. We'll get an eight point eight yuan discount. Yeah, so you get eight eight point eight yuan off if you if you spend a hundred yuan. Yeah. For, so for the celebration of him being shot dead. Mm -hmm. That's these that's are the okay. Now this one's handwritten. The other ones were printed signs. Yeah. These are on businesses. Yeah. It's awful. Yeah. We've got people celebrating his death in WeChat uh, groups. You know, having a big laugh about it. I'm yeah. Just out of there, you can see they're having a big ha ha ha. Yeah, that's. I, I'm more focused on these like public. Displays sure, there. obviously, that's, that's public sentiment. Yeah, in, in general, this one in particular really pisses me off because it says, you know, in celebration of the assassination of Shinjo Abe, all beers will be buy one, get one free. Yeah, it says assassination. Yeah, yeah so I mean, it's basically, you know, um, you buy one beer, you get one free. Great, so it's like, let's have a big celebration, free beers all around, basically, yeah. because he's yeah. been killed. Isn't that bloody disgusting? Yeah. I. You know what? Here's the thing. If Xi Jinping were uh, to die... Or whatever. Let's just say he were to die of a heart yeah, he attack. He just died, yeah. Okay? I'd be kind of like, well, great. Finally, we're rid of him. Okay? Right. I'll be honest Hopefully with you. Hopefully, there's some reform. Yeah, but I'm yeah. not going to go out and celebrate no, Absolutely this. not. Now, especially if he gets assassinated. Yeah, of if course. If someone not. went and no. shot him, right. I'd be like, that is 
that is terrible. That's right. terrible. Right. I don't. Th this is just not something that can be celebrated. No. Okay. I will say that there's a huge difference, and I, I very, very much think it's not good to make that comparison. Yeah. I didn't, don't think you're doing anything wrong, but I yeah. think people to understand the prime democratically elected prime minister is not the same as a forced dictator. Of course. That has no term. Of course. Limits. I mean, yeah. if Xi Jinping were to um, be be assassinated, let's just say, for instance. I would think it would be good for the world, personally. But sure. I'm not going to go put a banner outside no, my freaking shop to say, you know, to celebrate the, the assassination of Xi Jinping. You shouldn't celebrate the death of anyone. Half off, yeah. you know. No, right. you shouldn't. No. You should not celebrate the, the, the murder of somebody. Especially not in a jovial way like this. No, on like a national scale. Yeah. On a national scale, using it as a promotion for your shop to give yes. a discount. It's it's sociopath stuff. It is. But it, again, it's stuff that's been in, they've been indoctrinated since babies yeah. to do this. Yeah. When you tell your kids to kill Japanese people and to hate them and that they're evil and they're actually the same as demons, yeah. over and over again, and your teacher says that, and your grandpa says that, and your mom says that, mm -hmm. and the government says that on TV, what do you think is going to happen? Yeah. This, this kind of stuff. It's really gross stuff happens. Yeah. You know. I, I got a little wake-up call for all Chinese people is that the Communist Party of China killed more Chinese people than the Japanese ever did. Yeah. yeah okay. For sure. Maybe not in, in, a, in the same way. The Japanese, it's inexcusable what they did, but I'm saying on a number scale. Yeah, on a number scale. You know. Yeah. Anyway, let's, let's move on. Um, so you might be wondering how these businesses could get these banners printed. This is within hours. Yeah. Within hours of hearing that he was shot, okay? No. Not even dead yet, they were putting no. these banners up. No. And here's uh, some old footage of me going to what's called a Guangao shop. You can even see it up there. It says Guangao Dian, yeah. okay? Now, what this is, is it's a place that you can go to do advertisement, okay? You find them... Yeah, we used to go these all the time. You find them everywhere, okay? Everywhere, especially in Guangdong. Yeah, there. yeah. So what it says on the side there is advertising, printing, and whatever. And... What you do is you go in there and they provide a number of services. They can print you just a big banner if you want. They can print you, uh, you know, like a photo or something. They can uh, create vinyl stickers for you. That's what I'm doing here, by the way, is getting vinyl stickers made for my helmet. Because if any of you have seen my helmet when I ride uh, motorcycles, I, I have the different countries and the different provinces that I've um, driven around in or, or ridden around on a motorcycle. So I would... I got those done within like 15 minutes, mm. okay? And the reason I'm showing you this is you go to those same shops to get those banners made. Yeah, so you can, you can go in there and it's just a standard font. It's a standard kind of propaganda banner. So there's no preparation needed. You just tell them what you want written. They can print it out for you right there. You know, they've got everything ready. They've got the machine. They've got the, the cloth. And it's just like, put on there, you know, to celebrate this and this, blah, blah, blah. And they're like, okay. And they'll print it out. You can get it within 10, 15 minutes. So that's mm -hmm. why there's such a quick turnaround on these signs. Yeah. You don't have to order them or wait for them. No. So A little little lore here. By the way, that cloth that they use for those banners, you'll see those all over China, by yeah. the way, for everything. Yeah, and it all looks the same. The propaganda yeah. always looks like that. Yes. Sometimes it's yellow. It's mostly white on red. Yeah, so they use it for advertisements to get people's attention because it's supposed to be propaganda banners. Yeah. So it's the same font. Yeah, and, it is. And material. There was a, a rumor going around that they were using forced labor in North Korea to make that kind of, that specific material, that yeah. cloth. Number two bit of lore in these uh, Guangzhou shops down south, uh, these people come from a certain area of Guangdong, which is mm. the Cantonese region. And it's called Chaoshan. Yeah. And the Chaoshan, shout out to all the Chaoshan people that run these shops because they are so industrious. I mean, you get people with like a like elementary school education or have never been to school before yeah. that know how to use Photoshop they way know better than so I do. so good, <laughs> so good. And they set up these little shops and the uh, Chaoshan people are very famous for having so many kids and completely ignoring the one child policy. True. <laughs> they have like, they get married really young too. Yeah. So it'd be like a 19 year old girl, like six kids and she's doing Photoshop with a ba two yeah. babies here, you know? Yeah, it's we used to get thing. adverts made for yeah. our motorcycle shop and stuff in these kind of places. It's crazy. But you can find them in any little urban village or any yeah. like outskirts of the cities. You find these everywhere. So for those of you wondering how they could get those banners made so quickly, Here's your answer. Just yeah. go to a Guangzhou shop. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Um, so, of course, we have to look at some more of these sort of despicable comments. Let's let it play through. Otherwise, I'll miss it by mistake, I'm sure. Yeah. But, um, 
Oh, look, there's an evil uncle checking me out. <laughs> Freaking right. evil uncle's like, jing. Yeah. It's like, what the hell is this foreigner up to? Mm, mm, I'll, go, I'll go report him to the, <laughs> to the local security guards. That There's used to happen to me so lot, yeah, much. Me I'm filming myself and the bloody cops would show up because one of those bastards had ratted me out. Yeah. Because they're taught to do that as well, by the way. Right. You know, be suspicious of all foreigners. See something, say something type thing, you know? So this is actually, this is a good bit of... Uh, I don't know, not lore, a good bit of how, like, introduction to how the Chinese internet works. So on video streaming websites, um, like YouTube, mm. it's weird. You guys will probably find this absolutely infuriating and insane. Oh, I hate it. In wild China, subtitles. Yeah, it, in China, it's called wild subtitles. It's people's live comments will come up. And keep in mind, you might think that's like, wow, they get to write whatever they want. No, 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 listen. You can't write like Xi Jinping is bad or no. overthrow the Chinese government. That's already blocked, you know. Mm -hmm. But they have these live comments that will come up, live subtitles basically, that were either posted when the video was published and like that's the comment section right there, yeah. right? Or it'll be like live stuff. I'm just translating some of these. Yeah. They're, they're terrible. Like today like, is a great day. Yeah. Congratulations. Wow, this is amazing. Ha, ha, ha. You know, like... All this nonsense. Oh, it says beautiful. Pialiana. Yeah. It's beautiful. Yeah. All these things, you know, today is like really lucky. Yeah. You know, I'm looking at all these comments and this is because the, the, it's being reported that he's just been shot. And all of these comments is not one of them that are like saying, oh, that feel terrible or condolences or I hope he's okay. It's all like beautiful, good, yeah. great, eat, luck. <laughs> eat some Amazing. flower seeds. Yeah. It's like, what the hell? So they're celebrating this. But basically, I wanted to explain It's this. like, tonight I'm going to make food. Right. What is that? Jin Wan Jia Cai? What does that even mean? Oh, great. Now, because he's dead, I'm going to make food. Jia, no, Jia Cai means add, add more dishes to yeah. celebrate. Mm -hmm. if, when you celebrate something, you Jia Cai yeah, means add, you add food. more. You add more dishes. Because, yeah, for the celebration. celebration. So for you don't feast. just have your... It's a feast. So for, for once, that, that freaking peasant who's made that comment is not just going to eat rice with yeah, a single means, bean on it. It means to have a feast. Yeah, so now I'm going to add an extra bowl of vegetables to the side. Correct. Yeah. Or meat. Anyway. Usually it's meat. Yeah, obviously. Um, so this is how the Chinese internet works, though, is that they have these, and people will watch videos mm -hmm. like this. They won't barely see the video. Yeah. Because they, they need to see, a lot of how Chinese internet culture works is it's everything's in your face at once. Today so I'm you, eating dumplings. So you need to see people, how other people reacted mm -hmm. so that you yourself can react yeah. in a way. It's a very interesting cultural phenomenon. Yeah, look, I mean, I've got to be honest with you. I really hate wild subtitles. Oh, it's horrid. I'm it's, just explaining First of all, to like, people. when my wife watches, like, a Korean drama or something, it'll have this. She does that? Well, she used to. I don't know oh, if she does it anymore. But, like, when I was... My wife would go insane. I remember she used to. Uh, uh, maybe I put her off it. Yeah, I haven't yeah. seen her doing that recently, but every time I'd be like, how can you watch yeah, this? Yeah, yeah. Because that's... It blocks the screen. Yeah. It's just it everybody it's saying, just, like, ha, ha. Like, you or can like, barely Whoa. see Shinjo Abe there. <laughs> Just imagine you're like watching Bold and the Beautiful and all that's coming up there is like, oh, Ridge is going to have I'd, a fallout I'd with Brooke. I'd probably rather see that. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'd <laughs> but I'm just saying, it's like, it, yeah, no, the that. subtitles are telling you what you should think. Yeah, imagine that's watching the thing. Stranger Things or something and it's just walls of text. Yeah, and the walls of text blocking everything. And they scroll. And it's like telling you what you should think. Oh, yeah. that's scary. Yeah. Oh. You know, what, you know what is also super crazy is Japanese internet too. It's yeah. mad cluttered too. But do and, they have wild subtitles? Well, you know what they do have is on their TV shows, they always have celebrity panels with their reaction in the corner yeah, yeah, to yeah. tell you how to react. Japan's super weird too about that kind of stuff. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, I mean yeah. like anyone who can read Chinese and sees what's yeah, going on here, it's despicable. despicable. The people are basically celebrating this uh, happening and the wild subtitles. They're laughing at it. They're saying how, you know, how they're going to celebrate tonight about it. They're saying how funny it is and how um lucky it is mm -hmm. and how what's the word fortunate that, yeah. that you know yeah, they're, they're talking about fortune they're talking yeah. about all this crap so those are wild subtitles on like a live uh i love broadcast. you china <laughs> yeah <laughs> why seriously what does it have to do with anything uh other ccp shills and sycophants that work for the chinese just government chinese state media as well yeah. but it's a foreigner from new yeah. zealand says, guess what? China's 1.4 billion people hold a kaleidoscope of different views. They're not a monolith. See, this, this is the, the yeah. state narrative right now. Is, I thought it was interesting to see a foreign. Well, I shouldn't say a foreigner. He works for Chinese yeah, state yeah. media. But uh, it literally says Chinese state affiliate media. Yeah, media. It is. But anyway, like this dude and like Chinese state media in general, they're, how they're trying to play this, because it looks really bad as a pockmark, right? Sure. They've created this massive beast of hatred. 
Yeah. And everyone's like, dude, that's pretty gross. Like, why are they saying that kind of stuff? Like, what's wrong with China? It's making China look bad. And right. that's China's worst nightmare. They've created a nightmare. Yes. That's simultaneously their worst nightmare. Yes. And this is mirroring uh, the Chinese government sentiment flawlessly. Yeah. It's like, oh, yeah, of course some people said that, but it's not all people. Yeah, but look at how he finishes it off. He yeah. says, some are happy, sure, and they have every right to be. That's... Tell me that's not an endorsement. Of course that's an endorsement. That's disgusting. <laughs> it's an endorsement for assassination of a, of a yeah. political leader, oh, it's an like, ex-political yeah. leader. Some people are happy. They have every right to be happy that he was assassinated. Yeah. And again, like you said, they're trying to downplay it by saying it's just a few. It's, it's a, a big population. That's what they do with the There'll always be a few bad eggs. Movement. Yeah, there'll yeah. be a few bad eggs. Yeah. Meanwhile, no. It's why are people seeing this? It's not because it's a few. If it's a few, oh, no, it's, you it's wouldn't the, see it. It's the majority, yeah. right? And the thing is, like I said, I think the greatest thing you can do to really kind of not make excuses for this, but to understand it, is to, to realize the Chinese government created this. The Chinese people didn't have an inherent hatred. They weren't born with hatred in their heart for Japan or for no. any, any country in the world. No. It's a political tool to further the leadership of the Chinese Communist Party. And yeah. it's only that, yeah. right? So this guy is another tool in the co- uh, wheel in the cog. He certainly is a tool, I'll tell you that much. Tool in the, a tool in the bag he's or whatever. A, he's just a freaking tool, yeah. you know? Yeah, quite literally. Yeah, awful. Of the Chinese government. Anyway, as things were unfolding, um, Australian Chinese dissident Ba Diu Cao was translating some of the popular comments. Yeah, there's that were lots going and lots. They're just coming out now. Yeah, as, but this was as it was happening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm saying there's more. If you t- we, Like, we missed a billion of them already. Yeah. Because of just as we speak... It's going crazy. Yeah, exactly. So he, uh, just I, a couple. It's too small. I can't see these. You can't see them? Okay. Uh, so he, he's just translating a few. So it says like from WeChat. Um, it says, I hope uh, it is the current Japanese prime minister. I, it means I wish. I wish it yeah. was. He got the yeah. tense wrong. And the Korean one too that got shot. And then from Weibo, congratulations from the people of Shanxi. Um, eat an extra bowl, bowl of rice. rice. Just like we were saying earlier, Jia Tsai, yeah. right? Um, over here, it's like from Weibo. Congrats. Uh, oh, we read that one. I am waiting for Abe's yeah, death. Fun. So yeah. now this, this is obviously when um, he was still in critical de- condition. People are saying, I'm waiting for um, Abe's death. Who is the attacker? I want to donate money to him. Uh, I have to say, it's great news. You know, these are comments that are going around on the very popular platforms. Basically, the Twitter of China. Yeah. Um, it says... Uh, from WeChat. Thank you, anti-Japanese hero. I can laugh now. Um, from WeChat. Party time. Hope the man, man has trouble. Hope the gun is fine. And then F, F it. I'm so happy. All right. These are just some, some of these uh, uh, posts. So uh, according to Badiou Tsao here, it says Chinese nationalists on Weibo have begun to celebrate that Japan's XPM is shot during a campaign today. They call the attacker a hero and send death wishes to Abe. Um, and it, it is incredibly popular and it is the majority of people. Mm-hmm. I'm sick and tired of defending these awful um, netizens, by the way. And as somebody who has so many ties to China, as we do, fa- familial ties and also many friends and so on, there are certain things that cannot be defended. Um, and in this particular situation, you cannot say that it's a minority, a small little minority that's uh, reacting this way. When you know for a fact that it's actually the majority of people in China hold the sentiment because that's what they've been taught. Mm-hmm. You know, this mm-hmm. is one of those situations where you can't get away with it. You know, um, the opposite seems to happen here in the States. People seem to think that the KKK is somehow omnipresent, mm. you know, in the whole country, but it is actually a very small minority. Mm. You don't really run into members of the KKK. I've never run into one. I don't no, know about you. No. But you hear about them all the time. Yeah, they exist okay? in a very small... <laughs> the difference is, is that in order to run into these kind of comments on the Chinese internet, which is the most heavily censored internet in the world, mm. okay, and for them to come to the forefront so quickly... And for people to go and put banners on their freaking shops and in the windows of their shops and so on, celebrating the, the death of this, shows you that it's not a small minority. No. It's not a tiny little clan of people living in I was going to say, more hills. so than the internet comments, it's yeah. seeing in public businesses. Like, yeah. you can't excuse that. No, you, you can't. can't. excuse that. You can't. It's, it shows you that the sentiment is so widely accepted mm. that people would feel no shame to put up a banner outside of their business. 
No. They're a place of business. Yeah. Yeah. To say this it's kind cr- of thing. It's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. And it's a political tool for the Chinese you, government. You know, like uh, you wouldn't get a like a business here, no. for instance, putting up something that's terribly racist or something. It wouldn't right. be like F F the N word or something and put it out if, in front of their business. Honestly, and if they did it'd get destroyed. Oh, be, I mean like yeah. what a bad idea that yeah. would be for them. Absolutely. And there would not only just get destroyed, you'd have boycotts, you would have all kinds of pushback, it would be exposed, you know. In China, all that happens is if that kind of stuff leaks, yeah. like it does, because now, for instance, we're talking about it, the images of those restaurants, etc., will be removed from the internet, and that's yeah. where it will end. There will be yeah. no repercussions for the shop owners who put that crap up. And then the Chinese government will lay claim to the fact that n- almost no one thinks that and way. And it's only a small it's little a small minority little of minority. bad eggs type and thing. And they had nothing to do with this, yeah. by the way. If we didn't create this monster. If it's a small minority, why do we all see this from the most controlled internet in the world? Yeah, I mean, they could shut it down in two seconds. They could have. Yeah. They could have prevented it, yeah. but they allowed it to... Garner so they much. endorse it. It's on purpose. Yeah. Yeah. It is, they, they want to have their cake and eat it too. They do. Um, one thing that I didn't include here, which I forgot to include uh, to give you for the media pack, was the fact that um, the there was a reporter in China, a Chinese reporter, uh, who was reporting on the situation live. Yeah. And uh, she was getting very upset that mm. uh, Shinji Abe had been shot. She was, you know, close. Because to... as we're about to talk about in the next slide, there are reasonable people. Yes, there are, of course, reasonable people. In China. But she was um, getting uh, emotionally upset during her, her news cast. Okay, she was casting live. And she got attacked by Chinese netizens for being unpatriotic. for Because being... she should celebrate. Yeah, that she's upset that he was shot. Right. You know? Right. And this is a very unhealthy situation. It's... Super gross. And this is something that everybody around the world needs to pay attention to because this is the way that China reacts to these kind of things. This yeah. is this is the real sentiment of the Chinese people. Right. This is the real sentiment. If you're And it's on purpose. Yeah. It's it what the government has fostered through education and yeah. through brainwashing and through But it's not their outward appearance. No. That's the problem, is they want to look like a peaceful diplomatic dove like country that doesn't have any problems in the whole world, is not colonial colonialist or imperialist, yeah. I should say. Yeah. Doesn't go and spread around the world with with malice mm. and in ill intent, does not take advantage of people all around the world and is and it does not have any military ambitions. That's what they're trying to portray to the world. Yeah. Meanwhile, doing the exact opposite over and over and over again, and that's why we keep having to cover this crap, is because they do one thing and say something completely the opposite, and it's enough. Because that's what molds diplomatic relationships. Mm-hmm. It's what molds economic agreements. It's what molds, like whatever official words the Chinese government says is what molds how diplomacy works with China. Yeah. And the, the world can't operate like that because yeah. their actions are wildly different from what they're saying diplomatically. Correct. Correct. And that's what soft power is. Yeah. Their soft power is their ability to change your mind to think that they're doing one thing. Meanwhile, they're doing another Correct. thing. That's why we have the soft power hour here right. on our show is to right. show you this. And it is what the Chinese government says and what they do are two completely different things. Right. The amount of anti-Japanese rhetoric that you hear on the news and you see on the TV and these fantasy dramas that they have every day on TV is disgusting. Right. You can pick any nationality right now. Okay. You choose it. Think of a nationality that your country had a conflict with in the past and has a problem with. Okay, you choose it, whichever one you want. Now, imagine your government made TV shows every day depicting those people as subhuman animals, all right? Every single day blamed that country from something that happened 100 years ago, 90 years ago, whatever the hell it was. Which is horrific. Yes, horrific. But is not relevant now. No. It's relevant for history. Yes, and to, to, to learn lessons from that. But imagine that your government was so focused on daily teaching you to hate a specific nation. Yes. Or a specific over race. Over and over and over Non-stop. Again. And then... Called them demons and devils and dirty and bad and yeah. dumb and, and little showing and ugly. And showing you just disgusting, abhorrent things day in and day out when it comes to that person. Um, what happens when uh, one day something terrible happens to somebody in that country, you know what happens? Everyone celebrates because they've been taught to celebrate. And that's what we're seeing here. You know, you can say that the West really hates Nazis, right? Yeah. 
But that doesn't mean they hate Germans. No. Right? Correct. Because what you're doing is you're hating... Why would you hate Germans? A political party from that time Correct. that brought that about this terrible... The of course. You cannot say that a German... Per- so let's just say, I don't know, Angela Merkel has a, an assassination attempt or an assassination or, or something. Whatever, yeah. People are not going to go like, yay, death to Nazis. No, it does, it's not relevant. No. She's no. got nothing to do with the, Nazis. you know... Yeah. The Nazi party. No. And that's a big difference here, is that China, the Chinese government demonizes Japanese people. Yes. As yes. in every Japanese person. Yes. Now. Now. Currently. Man, woman, child, yeah. doesn't matter. They demonize them. And they're not demonizing, you know, Emperor Hirohito's bullshit little, nope. you know, I'm God thing. Nope. And his little clan and his, all that nonsense from that Horrible time. Shit that no. Did. Yeah. What they're doing is they're demonizing Japanese people and the country. Now. Yes. Now. And all of them, without exception. So when you get a leader in Japan like this or ex leader who's assassinated and it's a tragedy, you see this huge amount of celebration. You know, and that is the result of it, really. So now the flip side of that, Mm -hmm. which I thought was very interesting, is there are obviously a lot of reasonable Chinese people. Yes, there are, but they do not have a voice. They can't do anything. And you have to look so hard to find stuff like this, but it's ingenious. Yeah. So all of a sudden, the hidden populace, the ones in China that are just ready, ready to do something about like not not anything violent, but ready to Mm -hmm ready to um, rebel, ready to speak up, but finding ways to do it. Mm This will show you how repressed things are. Yeah. The Chinese government had to ban certain playlists or orderings of songs, right? Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you why. Some, a lot of Chinese people started listening to songs based on their title to make them go on the charts, right? And let me, let me read you some of these titles. So this one says, which means why, why isn't it you? Why wasn't it you? Yeah, why wasn't it you? Why isn't it you? Yeah. The next one is called Si Wang Suni, which means I wish it was I you. wish it was you. <laughs> yeah. The next one says Xia Yi Ge Jiu Suni. Yeah, the next one's gonna be you. And the last one says Zui Zui Ho Suni Jiao Hao. Yeah, exactly. Right the, at the end, it'll the, be you. The last and that's one, good. Yeah, the last one is you. That's good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you can just use your imagination as to what people are thinking about that. Yeah. Just use your imagination. Obviously, they're thinking about Xi Jinping there. Yeah, and that was kind of interesting to see that come out. Yeah, uh, they they shut that down. Shut real that down really quick quickly yeah. because there is that sentiment in China. Yeah, of course. Um, not that anyone's calling for that. It's just that that is there is a lot of deep seated hatred and sentiment for in the democratic Chinese people that want a voice. Yeah, we get messages from them all the time. Correct. So now you know how the and I hate I hate to say this, but the majority of the Chinese internet has been reacting to this sort of thing. Of course, there have been people who've been sympathetic. And we've even seen the diplomats, the wolf warriors, try their best to be diplomatic in this uh, particular situation. Obviously, they know that it's the wrong time to be pissing everybody off. Because um, the way things are going in that region, yeah. like I said earlier, if they were to insult um, you know, people too much yeah. with this kind of ha-ha, you know, like let's celebrate that you're someone you care about, you know, one of your leaders has been murdered, ha-ha, because that's what they're doing. They right. realize that that might rub some people up the wrong way and it might make them think, well, if that's the way you think about it, screw you, there's no reason that we have to be diplomatic towards you. For sure. You know? For sure. Absolutely. Which quite honest is, honestly, that's what China needs. They need people yeah. to stop being diplomatic because yeah. China's probably the least diplomatic country other than like Duarte or whatever his name is, or, you know, Duterte. some of these Duterte, is that his name? Yeah. You know, people like that who just say absurd things. Right. There are a couple out there, North sure. Korea and stuff. But yeah. when it comes to like being diplomatic, China is one of the worst countries in the world. Mm. Their idea of being diplomatic is to insult people, mm. you know, mm-hmm. and to do this wolf warrior shit mm-hmm. all where the they, time. Where they demonize and become incredibly racist in domestically. Yes. And then outwardly say, oh, we are the savior of the world. Yeah. We hate every. We hate but everyone. Even but even outwardly, I mean, look at like yeah. the, what's his stupid name, Jolly Jin with showing Australian, like CG Australian soldier cutting a child's throat and stuff like that. Who does I mean, that? Yeah, That's not diplomacy. Like next level bad. It's not, there is no diplomacy. The there. Chinese government is next level bad. It's terrible. Yeah. It's really bad. They constantly whine and moan about like, oh, poor us, we're not treated well. But they're the ones that are the, 
you know, oh, just it's just wolf. projection, yeah. you know? Yeah. They're the ones that are the worst when it comes to diplomacy out there. So I don't know what they're whining about. No. But, you know, the fact of the matter is the rest of the world has been treating China very well. If you were to weigh it up compared to the actions of the Chinese government, yeah. I think they've been treated more than fairly being yeah, allowed into absolutely. the UN human rights and all this other nonsense and people don't, don't taking, taking them seriously. Yeah. Um, and maybe it's time the rest of the world does a little tit for tat. And mm. when this kind of terrible behavior comes out of China, which is state encouraged. People call it out. Yeah. It needs to be called out. And we, there needs to be apologies. Yeah. yeah. You know? Yeah. They need oh, to make us. You will never once give No, and they need to the make Chinese a government. strong, bloody statement to the populace of China to say this is not okay. This is bad behavior. Because they won't say that. Because they made it. Yeah. It only serves them. If they do that, they admit they're wrong, and then people start to question the Chinese government. See how easy this is to figure out. Yeah. They will yeah. never do that. Yeah. It's impossible for them. They made this monster. Yeah. They want it to be like that. They do. But they want the rest of the world to think that they're doves. Yes. Correct. It's terrible. Anyway, let's hit some super chats before we move on. Sure. Yeah. <clears throat> um, uh, Dylan says in Albania there is a Taiwan club based. Oh, that's cool. Victor Hardison, thank you very much. Doc Slothington, old Doc here. Enjoy the chill vibe on the Monday show. Oh, Definitely thank you. Definitely a more relaxed feel than the Friday shows. Actually, let's use that as a segue. What is a segue? Um, real well, remember, guys, we... Um, Last last week, we started this new thing. If you're a patron of the podcast here, um, of a specific tier, you get to watch our Monday show, which is something completely different to this. So we thought we'd show you a little clip. Yeah, I didn't clip. really think about that. This is, these are a few little highlights. Don't worry, it's, it's less than a minute. We're going to show you a little clip of what we talked about on Monday. So let's get us out of here and we'll show you. That back then, it's 2020 hindsight to realize how a lot of China looks. Does that yeah. make sense? Yeah, I mean, this, this this to us was kind of normal. Well, it was. I mean, like, I wasn't filming it because I thought it was weird. I was yeah. filming the journey to get to the car. Let's take a look at the crash test here. That looks very safe to me. It, you just want it to stop, but it never stops. No. Yeah. Which was this bizarre, yeah. very bizarre German brewery slash restaurant that nobody went to no. at all. This is 95% of what you see, and yeah. we film none of it because yeah. we want China to look good. So yeah, you see the, the waitresses, they even had them dressed up in like uh, Bavarian kind of German. Yeah. There's one of the guys who worked there, one of yeah. the owners. This is Serpent ZA exclusive. Yeah. Serpent ZA, tell us, <laughs> explain to us, what kind of snake is this? What I don't know. What snake is this? It's a green Hold one. it still. Kind of Belgian snake. <laughs> Hang on, don't get bit, don't get bit. I'm gonna put it in the grass. <laughs> So, um, can you pause it? Yeah. Okay, let me talk about this real quick. Sure. So, uh, for all of you guys that don't know, we had a fantastic time, like I said, on Monday. Um, and it's going to be every Monday. Yes. Um, so, we've structured it. So, we talk about stuff that uh, people have never heard about or something. It's something relevant to China, obviously, but with uh, personal anecdotes, pictures, videos, all that kind of stuff. Really good. Some of our adventures, some of our crazy foibles. And actually, we talked about... Uh, in this episode, we talked about Volkswagen's weird relationship with yeah. China because we have a lot of experience with that. You had lived fairly close to the Volkswagen factory, which yeah. we went to this weird, bizarre German, German restaurant house, there yeah. that was set up just for the factory. There's only one customer. There's one customer. There's this megalopolis, basically. <laughs> sure. I bought one of the first Chinese cars ever made, uh, mm -hmm. Volkswagen Santana, and did road trips and stuff in that. But basically, can you take us out of that so people can see? Yeah. Um, it's called Xiaoban Ho, which means like uh, after work. Mm -hmm. And it's a place for, we live stream every Monday at 2, uh, two o'clock PT and 5 uh, PM ET. Mm -hmm. And everyone's there. Um, we talk to you live while we're doing it. Yeah. Right. Um, and it's only going out to the patrons in that tier. And then uh, if you don't have to be there live because it'll stay up on Patreon. Yeah, you can watch it later. Like you, if you were to join that patron tier, you could go and watch um, yeah. last Monday's. Episode. I highly, highly, highly recommend it because it was probably some of our most fun work and every single person that was in the show mm -hmm. um said that they had such an awesome time well, it's a lot more personal it's, it's very just, personal it's kind of like it's a like VIP a vip play. club in kind, a way. Of, kind it's of it's really fun by the way the, the snake that i picked up there uh turns out it was a like a bamboo viper, yeah. viper very, um very venomous. which is an incredibly venomous snake yeah. Yeah. and um i realized that after i'd picked it up yes and I threw it away very quickly into the grass when I realized yes. that it was actually going to kill me if I let yes. it bite me. Um, we were a little... We were quite drunk, sir. 
yeah. intoxicated. That was back in the day. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, um, let's move on, shall we? Yeah, I'm just pulling up. Uh, we had a bit of a hiccup with the super chats, but our moderator got all of them. Oh, it did. Okay, um, good. So he's going to be sending them to us. I just have to send him a message so you can talk a little bit. Okay. So, well, I guess then we're going to just move straight into our next Yeah, segment. yeah. Well, I mean, we have. I'll pull them up in a second, but yeah. Yeah, okay. do that. So, um, well, we're going to talk about Wumao Corner now. Now, those of you who don't know what Wumao Corner is, Wumao Corner is where we talk about the trolls, okay? The 50 Cent Army. But this time we're talking about a different kind of a troll. We're going to talk about one of our favorite trolls, um, our Australian mate, uh, Drew Pavlou. Because guess what he's up to? You have any idea what he's up to? Uh, probably causing shit. That's what he does. Um, he's at Wimbledon. <laughs> okay. Okay. So strawberries and cream, um, as you, you know, is very famous. What? Well, you don't know about that? That uh, sounds familiar. Well, it's Wimbledon. It's all about strawberries and cream. You can all look right. it up later and educate yourself me. on some culture. Tell me. You always yeah. put me on the spot. Tell me what? what it means. It's what people do when the Wimbledon tournament well, why? comes along. Because it's tradition. But why? Because tradition is tradition. No. Why do you, you, do why do you, you like... You did this to me last show, so I'm doing it to you this time. That's the tradition. Why? Strawberries and cream, because that's what you do at Wimbledon. But why? There is no why. There's definitely Why do you why? drink eggnog at Christmas? Because somebody came up with it. And yeah, somebody some... came up with a freaking strawberries and cream for Wimbledon. Yeah, but there's going to be a And story. you know why? Because the Wimbledon Wombles decided that they're going to go and get the strawberries and this the cream. This is all made up shit. Yeah, anyway, that's how it's it is. all fake. It's not fake, it's true. I'm just getting all the super chats. Yeah, so. yeah. Anyway, <laughs> while you wonder about why you don't know about strawberries and cream for a minute there, uh, let's see what You're he did. You're gaslighting me again. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm cyber bully. Straw, straw manning you strawberry whatever that is you. that sounds bad <laughs> it's terrible anyway um we all know peng shui um who tweeted out uh allegations that she was sexually harassed and well basically forced into being a mistress of that horrible looking Zhang gao li high up in the communist party and her um weibo post was almost immediately removed, like 30 minutes later, and then she got disappeared. And nobody could uh, hear from her, no matter who reached out to her. The World Tennis, uh, International Women's Tennis Organization reached out. They couldn't get a hold of her. Um, nobody could get a hold of her. She was tr well and truly disappeared until sometime later where through the Olympic Committee, because the Olympic Committee, of course, is in the pockets of the CCP because they were busy with the Winter Olympics thing in Beijing and they were all tied into that at the time. Um, they got to speak to her in a very sort of strange, forced sort of uh, interview which was not made public. They also released some very strange... Um, public sighting videos of her, which uh, everybody could tell it was all put on. So <clears throat> she disappeared from the spotlight after that. And people still don't know the story because she has disappeared and she's not out there. She hasn't told her story. She hasn't been able to explain what went down, why she put out that post. There's been no follow-up. So, of course, Drew Pavlou went to Wimbledon because she used to be a, a Wimbledon uh, star. And uh, he wore a Where is Peng Shui t-shirt and held up out a banner. So let's show what happened there. Um, let's get us out of here. Yeah, this is private yeah. property. Right. We want you to leave your trespasses. You have to leave. Yes, please, good movies, please. Thank you. Please. Here we go. Yes, if you want to. I'm not, because I'm not moving. We're speaking out for an innocent woman who's been disappeared. Absolutely she's not. a she's a former Wimbledon champion, and we know you're. The place. And it's no time to leave. I'm not going to be leaving. This is not a political statement. I believe this is just a humanitarian statement for women. I totally agree. But a lot of people will recognise that as a as a political statement as well because there's the Chinese government involved. I don't believe that we should silence ourselves because of the Chinese government. But you've got your job. I've got mine. No, no, no. I understand that. And what what is your job? Oh, to raise awareness for Peng Shui. So who's who asked you to do that? Right. Uh, I've been a campaigner for a couple of years now. I, I did it at the Australian Open as well. So, um, yeah, good old Drew putting on his... Uh pacifist voice he always, <laughs> he always he always does it you know what I mean I'm just trying I mean, to raise he awareness. is a pacifist in a way it's so passive he's aggressive it's so no of course yeah. but he's such a shit just, stirrer that's I'm his job here. is to stir is. shit if does. there was a massive pot of shit that he'd be the one there with a the big ladle we love what he does yeah 
No, but it's, certain shit. it's it's important that he does this. Oh, though. yeah, we definitely support it. This is funny. It shows you how him holding up a sign silently asking where is Peng Shui, not like jumping up and down making oh. a huge thing. He gets accused of uh, making it political and so on. And you see how well the Chinese Communist Party has managed to indoctrinate yeah. the rest of the world. Yeah. How is it political to ask where Peng Shui is? Not. How can that cause a political problem it's, between the UK and China? It's absolutely not. Yeah. It's ridiculous, it's right? very ridiculous. So uh, that's what we thought we'd put him under Wu Mao Corner because he is pretty much uh, being a, a troll. Of yeah. Him. He's Australian definitely being a, he's being a troll. You know, with his, for a good cause. With his strawberries and cream over there. You oh, know. We can look that up. Yeah, look it up. Where does strawberries and cream whim? Actually, we'll wait. No, pull, keep going. We'll, okay. we'll wait for that. Uh, I'll pull it up, but we'll wait for that for uh, what's it called? For what? Oh, yum cha. Yeah, we'll talk it's about, about that. about food, and yum cha is like eating brunch. Yeah, okay. We'll talk about the strawberries and cream, and you'll be surprised at the um, origins of that. You need to tell me. You see, you already admitted you don't know. <laughs> no, I you said, said you'll be surprised. No, before you said you didn't, though. You no, said it's only because no, of tradition. No, you're, no, you're lying now. You'll be very, very surprised. <laughs> anyway, so let's... <laughs> let's such <laughs> bullshit. Strawberries and cream is lame anyway. Yeah. What is the hell though? is cream? Who puts... I, like, dude, not don't get me started on British food. It's not going to be that, that American stuff in the can that you go like... <laughs> it'll be like actual cream. But that I like, is not I like what that I was stuff, thinking. by the way. Yeah, man, like that's it. great. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. Anyway, it's time for us to move, move on to world news. We'll just, you know, we'll we'll do our world view. Sorry. <laughs> what he said. Yeah. Dramatic unicycle says strawberries and cream, safe search off. <laughs> <laughs> world view where we talk about what's going on in the world, specifically with regards to China. This is kind of world view what we're going to talk about right now. And that oh, is yeah, yeah, for this sure. massive Oh, yeah, this is wild. Data breach that is now for sale, um, which apparently holds um, private information of over a billion Chinese people. Yeah, so what happened was a guy, a Chinese netizen, mm -hmm. for $200,000 bounty, this was like 10 Bitcoin, Yeah, $200,000 bounty, which is not crazy. No. Put up an alleged leak of one billion. So the the majority, I would I would say that the other four hundred million people are probably kids that don't have massive online presence or identities Maybe, yeah. or seller history, buyer history on mm -hmm. Taobao things like that. But of uh, uh, presumed uh, personal details of of everyone, yeah. literally everyone. No, be before you continue, a lot of people might think, how is that even possible? You have to understand how China operates. With their Generation 5 ID cards and, and yeah. beyond, have yeah. all got chips in them, RFID. Yeah. When you buy a train ticket, when you do anything, you have to present that card and scan it. you got to pay for, a, I don't know, a fine, a, a traffic fine or something. All the machines have ID card readers. Yes. And you tap your ID card yeah. on there. It has all of your information. And your face. Yeah, it's got your face. It yeah. comes up. Comes up on the screen. It's got all the information tied to you, yeah. like how, Everything. like your social credit yep. score. It's got your and how it's many. Current. Yeah, like because people change. Like for example, if you use the West as an example, people move all the time. Yeah. They get like uh, new, uh, new uh, what's it called? Registrations for their cars, yeah. all that kind of stuff. But in China, it's constantly updated because it's tied to your Huko and mm -hmm. your Gen Five ID, and it's centralized. It's and it's centralized. Yeah, it's crazy. So you know, when you take your card, your yeah, ID no, there's card, no provincial ID. Yeah, it's exactly. It's yeah. centralized. It's also centralized from the point of view of. You know, here you've got the DMV, and it's different to the Social Security, and it's different to this Your and that. State. And, and yeah, the state stuff. So it's not all kind of, you don't get all the information. No, no. Because you'd have to go to the DMV to find yeah. out, like, what cars are registered you, for instance. But, you know, that... Imagine I, having it all. It's all kind of, spots. everything's tied. Not only that, but, yes. of course, your online presence is yeah, tied to that. And so there... There are massive central databases yes. which have to be ready to be accessed by all Correct. these different departments. Right. So when somebody scans their card, it has to query the database to get all the personal information about that person, right? So that's why it's feasible that a billion people could be compromised because all you would need is access to these central databases. Correct. And it could be outdated, it could be new, it doesn't matter, but right. you know, a backup of this or whatever, a cloud leak or whatever the case it might be. But... These central databases do exist, and that's why it's possible that this is legitimate. Yeah. Did anyone uh, pay the bounty yet? I don't know. 
I don't think so. I reckon like a. I think I reckon like world governments would easily pay that. Yeah, you know, maybe the five eyes should club together and pay the dude. Chip, chip in. Chip in, you know, like, well, chip <laughs> they in. They definitely don't have enough money. No, no, exactly. Yeah, they should do it. 200 grand is a bit rich. I don't know, like a telemarketing company could do it. Oh, my gosh. Think <laughs> they about get that. A lot, yeah. Oh, dude, they would pay 200 million for yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, of course, the, the Chinese government's going out there and saying, oh, it's not real. Yeah. But they would say. Oh, that. yeah. So I wanted to. So I talked to a person. Actually, it was a Chinese tech dude. Right. about this who actually put me onto this a few days ago when this happened mm -hmm. and i was talking to him i was asking him questions over patron about it and he's telling me how it initially would have caused massive waves and the reason being is that china is now doing this bizarre projection bullshit where they're saying that their internet privacy laws are actually better than the west which is absolute insanity like yeah. it's like clown world delusions it is right it's like you have someone in a freaking straight jacket smashing their head against a padded wall because they forgot their medicine level crazy. Yeah. But they, what they've done is successfully actually pay tech magazines and newspapers to spread this idea that China's new formats, alleged formats of how they're going to do um, people's online privacy and people's online identity mm -hmm. um, and hiding it and being able to protect their rights through legal recourse mm -hmm. is better than other countries and it really actually i felt like i was being slapped in the face with a crazy fish or something <laughs> sure. because i just couldn't believe i was reading but they were doing this they were writing op-eds they were taking out ads mm -hmm. they were you know how these it's capitalism right you yeah. can pay anybody to run something for you sure i wish i put some of this in here there's like i don't remember which tech stuff it was you know your big tech tech blogs and magazines things like this right yeah so it actually carried over into the domestic internet. They were putting out these Chinese language articles about how uh, China's internet privacy is actually better. And people in, in China were buying it. And then when something like this happens, I mean, that's like, it's the polar opposite, of right? It's, it's everything that's been leaked by everyone. Yeah. And they, I've, I've to this day not seen China be so on top of something. They wiped it clean. You couldn't get anything past the censors about this. You couldn't find any information no, about it at completely all. completely gone. Yeah. It was wiped. Of course. Um, and again, I think it's great to tie this back to the just v disgusting stuff that's being posted about Japan right now online yeah. and how that's allowed to proliferate. Yes. And China can always be, oh, it's just some people. We can't have no control over what people say. Absolutely bullshit. Yeah. They can uh, literally get rid of yeah. anything. They can shut they can down discussions. History. They can shut down entire services like yeah. Weibo. If yeah. something they don't like oh, is it's, going it's on, it's switch. Just, boom, it's gone. It's an off switch. They can make it so nobody can post anything for like 24 hours or like yeah. whatever. They can do whatever they want. So when you see something gaining traction on the Chinese internet, it's because it's being allowed to gain traction. And usually what happens is when it gets out of control, that's when they step in and they're like, wait, you know, this is making us look bad. So yeah. let's just pretend that it's a couple of bad eggs and let's just kind of give just kind of silence people for a bit and we'll let them come back later. You know, they're doing what we want them to do. So we're not yes. going to like block them or anything. No, absolutely not. So yeah, you got to bear that in mind when it comes for to this sure. stuff. Anyway, the fact of the matter with this whole thing is from our own personal experience, internet privacy is not something that people take seriously in China. No. In fact, if you install WeChat on your phone, it, yeah. it wants access not only to your microphone, your camera and all of that stuff indiscriminately, yeah. But access to your bank accounts, yeah. your contact lists, and all this other stuff. Yeah. Because you end up doing everything through your that's, WeChat. That's so correct. you pay your electricity bill, yeah. your gas bill, you pay at your restaurants. Yeah. So it wants access to all of your financial stuff. It wants access to your, your location history. Because you know that um, when you buy it with WeChat and stuff, it needs the location history as well. It does. Because it's like when you You need all your purchase, permissions on. Yeah. When you make your purchase, it makes sure you're at that shop or whatever. So, you know, like you literally give away all of your yeah. rights to privacy yeah. when you use just WeChat. Never mind just anything on the internet in China. Right. You know what I mean? They're like, get a 10 cent discount on this. Just give no us your whole family is. history. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying. Yeah, I do. Absolutely yeah. agree. Probably time for Yamcha. Huh? It is. Okay, let's hit Yamcha. This is the section of the show where we just shoot the breeze and uh, answer your super chats and have a conversation. Um, this stays live. You watch it live. It stays live over the weekend. On Monday, we cut it out of the show and it gets uh, put, onto know, what? put onto Patreon which you can go to our patreon.com forward slash ADV podcast whenever you like and you can sign up 
um, for as little as five dollars a month. Yeah, the lowest tier you can always get the uncut yeah, episodes. You'll always get the uncut. And the then Shop and Ho thing is a, a that's the VIP tier. club. That's a higher tier. Anyway, yeah, but go check it out if you would like to support us. We greatly appreciate everybody who supports us there. Uh, you really do make a massive difference in our lives. Specifically, since and I gotta say, my channel at the moment's taken a hit. I've been kind of uh, it's understandable. You know, we all go through like down periods. Yeah. Had a bit of a burnout period recently. Yeah, happens. But uh, You're I, back on the hog, though. Yeah. No, everything's fine. But I put out a video about my brother. It's a bit of a hard-hitting one. Actually, you know. this ties into the next Super Chat. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, this is bizarre. Mm. I just have to say. Um, it's been bothering me for the longest time. I wanted to talk about how my brother died and sort of confront it and talk about it because it's something I've never really openly talked about, right? I've, I've told you about it, obviously, but... In general, I've never really spoken about it, so I decided I would speak about it. But the bizarre thing is that when I released my video, I didn't tell my parents, I didn't tell anyone that I was going to do it. I just did it because, you know, I wanted to get it out there. <clears throat> and, you know, obviously my mom saw it and she spoke to me and it turns out that my brother died like a day after I released the video. I didn't even know that. Wouldn't it have been the same day, though, because of, like, uh, South maybe, Africa time or something? But, I mean, that's just some coincidence. That's really weird, right? Yeah. That's just some really effed up coincidence, because I did not plan that. No, because you weren't, like, you didn't think about no, it. No, I right? delayed making this video for, you know, I've been talking about doing yeah. it for, like, a month. Right. And I kept delaying it, delaying it, and finally I put it on. It happens to be pretty much on the day that he died. It's crazy. That's just some weird-ass coincidence. It is very weird. Anyway... Uh, you know, understandably, the video is not doing very well performance-wise. Well, yeah, because it's very personal. It's a personal right? video. But if you guys, yeah, I can vouch. Like, if you guys, you know, care about Winston's story or, or us yeah. in general, you'll appreciate the story. Yeah, I would appreciate it, at least going to to give give it a, a view and a thumb, thumbs yeah, up at least. For sure, I agree with that. Um, I would get that help the algorithm. Yeah, I would be very grateful for the story of my brother to be out there a little more. Yeah, so I'd be very grateful. David to you guys. Brooks Thank actually you. said, "Winston, I hope you're okay from the other day, man." Yeah, thank you. It, I'm not going to lie. It was, <laughs> it's, it's not, tough, yeah. I didn't expect it. I thought it would just really just be me talking about, you know, the story of how my brother died sure. and, and how I dealt with it. But I didn't realize that I'd never really dealt with it. So sure. it hit me really hard. Yeah, it re- hit me like it. really hard. I get it. Uh, it took me about a day to recover. Uh, yeah. Totally fine now. Yeah, yeah for Back sure. to normal. Right. And, you know, it's it was a horrible traumatic. No, <laughs> and I got to tell you, making that video um, and being able to share it with my audience mm was something that I think helped greatly. It really did. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not joking. Like, thank you, everybody it's who necessary. watched it. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah, anyway, we've got it. the guys that are... For, well, what, what was your video this week? It's fantastic. Oh, yeah, so it's just why people are leaving... Uh, foreigners are leaving China. Yeah, but it's like a... Jo- but it's, it's, a, a fu- it's a funny yeah. one. I really enjoyed it, especially since <laughs> they're talking about Africans, basically. Yeah, so the Chinese government's claiming... A uh, yeah. little spoiler, claiming that foreigners are all leaving China. Yeah. Not for what reasons you think. Yeah. Because it's really bad PR. Mm. They're claiming it's. I'm, I can't spoil it. Go watch it. Yeah, do you got to watch have it? You have no idea. Like, it's beyond belief what it's they're just, saying. It's just such nonsense. <laughs> anyway. So, yeah, for those of yeah. you who are going to stick around with us, um, who are watching live or on the weekend, yeah. thank you very much. And for those of you who are watching it later on, uh, we'll catch you next time. So, mm-hmm. stay awesome.